Being a host really is cool. It's one of those things that you can do with your head held high. You're doing a good service to society. As controversial as that statement may be, I truly believe it. It's a business that people can start, do something good, and make real money. And we've seen it over the last 10, 12 years. This video is dedicated to everything that I love about hosting. And there's a lot. I'm gonna try to keep it to 10 things I love about being an Airbnb host that you might love too. And number one, I wanna start with some gratitude about how it changed my life. It was an industry that I could get into without any previous experience. A lot of you, just the same. We were all new ones, right? But I wasn't in real estate, I wasn't in hospitality, I was in newspapers, and I had some apartments that I rented. And I rented them so that way people could work for me selling newspaper subscriptions and then they moved out of these apartments. So for that reason, I'm so grateful to have found something that not only paid the rent on these few apartments, but was something that I could make sense of and continue to invest in and grow. And I think it's amazing. It taught me a valuable lesson. Back when I was in the newspaper world, I was grinding 100 hour work weeks to make six figures. And I thought to make more money than that, I was going to have to work harder. It was almost unfathomable, but I was trying to find ways to be smarter and work harder. I built a seven figure newspaper sales business and that was really really tough but making seven figures on Airbnb easy street compared and that taught me that sometimes there are actually opportunities that are easier than other ones just because of timing per se Warren Buffett had a quote about this and I'm going to paraphrase it but he said if you put a person who's talented at succeeding and in an industry that's good at failing together the industry will always win and I was trying to win in the newspaper field and I'm glad that I got out of it thanks to hosting I love Bucky's too by the way not an Airbnb thing but I definitely love me some Bucky's the second thing that I love about Airbnb is that it is easy to understand once you're in it. The business model isn't overly complex. We have person coming to a place, they're going to sleep, they're going to leave, and the place needs to be cleaned. It's transparent enough that you could care and figure it out without having to go to college. I think that's one of the biggest things about this industry that's probably caused so much growth is we all sleep on beds. We all have traveled at one point. So we all have enough life experience to kind of find our way into the industry. Now the industry has gotten harder, right? We have to have good design and um, there are technologies that maybe you need to get to know and pricing strategy is a big thing that I talk about all the time so it's not just some overly simple thing but it is something that anybody could comprehend enough to get started and not like drown not get buried and lose millions and yes I know that statement is a red flag not losing millions because there are big companies that have lost hundreds of millions of dollars and real estate investors that have lost money but I think that whole shtick is for a different video but that leads me to the third thing that I love about being a host this business model the little guy has an advantage because hospitality Hospitality is the art of connecting with another human and making them feel seen, accommodated, and comfortable. My biggest challenges as an Airbnb host have come from trying not to deal with guests. Hiring myself out of a job, automating stuff, check-in guides that are sent on automated messages, and trying to find ways that I don't have to answer guests' questions late at night. That stuff, let's use the word abdication, even though it's a big one, is what drives people out of business, I think. The little guy who cares about the guest and goes the extra mile once in a while is the one that stays in business, that gets the good reviews. It's a great industry to be in if you care. And the fourth thing that I love about this business model, being a host, is that it is scalable. That's not impossible either. I can tell you how hard it was to run sales teams in multiple cities for newspapers. I couldn't run more than two cities at once because it was all dependent on sales guys, their motivations, their integrity and honesty. People would cheat all the time to make commissions. That industry was tough. It was really hard. This industry, I've gotten up to nine cities on housekeeping teams, good, honest labor. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second too. And I've gotten to my size, over 150 properties doing more of the same. I thought this was true in the newspaper industry. I used to tell people, if you could do something once, you could do something a thousand times. And I was talking about having a conversation that would sell a newspaper subscription back then. Now, that one thing that we do is the turnover, the cleaning the home and making it good. We have two sides of the business. We've got the launch, which is making the home beautiful, which good design is a great preventative strategy against hardship in the future. I'll tell you, the more time you spend on the front end, making sure that the place is right out the gate, the less time you have to spend on the back end. If you want to make this business passive, make every listing awesome. That's my advice for that. But the turnover is something that you can duplicate, that you have systems, that you have checklists, and you can put housekeepers on an hourly quota, like how many hours does it take to clean this place, and what to do when it's really trashed, what to do when stuff goes missing. Because of volume of scale, we've done hundreds of housekeeping cleanings this week, right? And because of that, we see everything. And at scale, you get a lot of data, and you can run a really, really good business at scale. I mean, I've achieved a life that I never dreamed of because I was able to duplicate housekeeping teams. This is nuts, it's awesome. And the fifth thing that I love about hosting, being a business owner in this space, is the relationships that you build with the people that you hire. Hiring a housekeeping person is a entry level position. We tend to hire people from places like 
at Wendy's or Jack in the Box or McDonald's or Golden Corral or the gas station down the street. That's the same thing that I did in the newspaper industry. That's a bias that I have. I always found it hard to hire in the newspaper industry because it was straight commission. No one wanted to sell a newspaper subscription for a commission only if they had any dignity whatsoever. It wasn't a sexy job. But somebody working at Jack in the Box for $6 an hour back then, seven an hour, they would do it. And they would make their first commission check like 600 bucks, which is way more than they ever made on minimum wage. They would love the job. So we did the same thing here in the housekeeping world. I'm good at training people and that's why I went this direction is I'd go find happy people at low paying jobs. And then I would offer them way back in the day, 12 to $13 an hour. We pay 17 now. And I'm seeing ads requiring that people have master's degrees paying 20 an hour. So $17 an hour is a great pay for someone who needs no experience and not even a high school diploma. We'll let you in. And what happens when you give someone opportunity is the coolest thing. When you give someone a way up to make a little bit more money, to learn a new skill, to rely on themselves, they'll look up to you and you can build a relationship with someone and care about their future and you get to see them go places. It is the coolest thing, and I hope to do that until I die. Hire people who never thought that they had a chance and give them a chance. And housekeeping teams doesn't sound like the biggest thing, but if you remember, Haley started with a $500 per week salary in my company years ago as my assistant. First day, we were both cleaning apartments. It was like when I first launched in Dallas, 2018, and we cleaned toilets her first day. She eventually got over $120,000 a year salary at this company before she moved on, she started her own thing. That's pretty cool, right? Within a few years, she went from five a week to like $2,400 a week. That is upside that you could give someone if you wanted to grow your business like that. Otherwise, you can give someone a local operations job, but they do make a good salary, fifty dollars to $80,000 a year to help you run all of your Airbnb properties in one city. It's also something that you could do. And the sixth thing that I like about this industry is that it is a whole business. And I have to kind of explain this from a book that I read once when I was homeless. The book was called The Leadership Pipeline by Ram Charan. I had failed as a manager in the newspaper industry before before I started my own business. Off the back of that failure, I tried to start a teeth whitening sales company and failed that and went homeless. While homeless with a negative balance in my Chase Bank account, I went to Bank of America and tried to open an account. And they wouldn't let me because I think one of my accounts got closed or something. He's like, sorry, we can't open an account for you. And he saw that I was down bad. So this business banker said, hey, here's a book that I recommend you read. It spoke to me and it's one of our required reading books for this whole office that we have here. And I took it, sat in a Starbucks and I read it. And one of those chapters talked about moving up in a company, maybe into management upper management into almost like enterprise management where you have to deal with accounting, sales, research and development, human resources, like you deal with multiple departments. A person who gets promoted to that level usually finds that they try to solve all of their problems with the one skill set that they had. So if they were an accounting manager first, they would try to solve all of the interdepartments problems with accounting. Same thing for sales. And that was me as a sales guy. I always try to sell my way through everything. Like I would work more hours doing sales instead of training new sales guys or finding ways to make their life easier, I would just try to do all the selling so we hit our quota, for example. And that was something that really spoke to me later in life. When you take that concept and apply it to this Airbnb hosting space, there's stuff that you're good at. You might be really good at design. You might be good at leading housekeepers. You might be good at customer service. You might be good at like data, analytics, revenue management, but you get exposed to everything right from the go, right from door number one. So as a host with one property, you start to respect all of the parts of a whole business. You start to see all of it. This is really great because a lot of people that start businesses usually start as a technician. There's a series of books called E-Myth and I read E-Myth Mastery. It's about entrepreneurship and they talk about this. You can be a technician, you can be a manager, you can be a business owner. And they use being a baker, for example. You could be the best baker in the city and you can grow your business to a certain size because you can bake and you can sell your goods. But at one point where you hire other bakers and have multiple locations, you'll fail because you don't know how to manage other bakers. You're just the technician, a baker or a plumber or an Airbnb the host, right? A customer service representative on steroids. So this business forces you to reckon with all of the parts of a business. And that makes you more prepared for any other thing you ever do, ever, ever. I think number seven is one that I actually miss. One of my favorite things about this industry was when I was brand new, all the people that I got to meet. I met some really cool people at my first Airbnb properties, like stood in the doorway and talked to them. It was really fun. I still once every great while get to have a conversation with someone. A couple months ago, maybe three, there's a gentleman who got scammed out of buying a property and him and his girlfriend and kids needed a place to stay. And we have really affordable Airbnbs and he was 
paying me every day or two, money he was making on Uber because he just didn't have any cash. And we constantly let him pay late, stay late. We just worked off the books with him a bunch. He was having a really bad time. But we had some really important conversations for him to get his head on straight. And those conversations that I had with him reminded me of the time that I went homeless where my old neighbor gave me some really good advice about not losing focus. I still remember that advice to this day. I wish I took it back then, but I remember it now. And if you're a small host with just a couple of properties, you will meet amazing people, even today. Even with the bad rap about Airbnb guests, there are still great guests out there. And number eight, I don't think many people will agree with me on this. One of my favorite things about this industry is that it's changed and that it is competitive. I mean, I really did a number on my own business by teaching everybody how to Airbnb for free. There are so many hosts out there now that are good and it forces you to compete and change and reconsider what your business should be, what it should look like, how it should run. And I love that challenge. I love having to make changes, adapting to the industry. It gives me ammo to come here and give you guys videos. Remember when COVID hit, I was stressed, stressed, but I did a video every day on like my pricing strategy and ways that we were getting direct bookings and that situation forced a lot of growth. And isn't that why we're here, like on earth here? is to grow, right? So if you're not in a space where you're growing, I think you'll eventually detach. You'll pull back out of it and not wanna be part of any of it. And I know people who did really good on Airbnb and also people who've done really good as Airbnb coaches, but they didn't connect with it and they thought it was just going to be a way that they were gonna make easy, steady money forever without any real internal challenge. And when those challenges came, they woke up one day and said, you know what, I don't wanna meet those challenges. I'll take the pay cut and move on. So I've seen people leave the industry, both coaching and hosting, because it really wasn't for them. Those challenges force you to get to know yourself on a deep level and it can reaffirm why you're here and that you should be here. So with that, congratulations for still being here. And number nine is this. I get to take everything that I learned, all the challenges that I've gone through, all the mistakes that I've made, and I can make videos. And I can tell you guys, this is what works for me. And I'm ADHD, you guys have probably noticed that. So sometimes I don't say things the best way. I'm like, you should do this, you should do that. But that's just me super emboldened because I got my butt kicked for a couple years doing something and I learned a better way. And I'm coming here on a video and I got eight minutes to share it with you or something like that. And I'm like, you should do your prices like this. But it's because I care. And these videos are probably one of my favorite things to do with my life. I do coaching on Saturdays, that is my very favorite thing. Making these videos from my experiences are probably why I'm still hosting. It's a cool business, don't get me wrong, but I would be a musician if there was no consequences to that decision. That's why the piano's over there. I dropped out of music school. So I'm an artist at heart and running a business that has challenges that I can distill into lessons and create videos in a way is a form of art. And thank you for being here and allowing me to make these videos for you. And number 10 of my favoriteest things in this industry, bird's eye view, is that this industry is so close to so many other things that you can grow this and do whatever it is you want from there. It's real estate based in a way. It's service based in a way. It's operations based in a way. There's so many things that you can do with this. You can take a property and decide that you like the peer space side and then you start a photo studio and a podcast studio. You can get into this and decide that you like the making material renovations to properties. So you start doing fix and flips and stuff like that. You may like operating multiple units at once. So you decide to get into the hotel space. You might like teaching so you become a coach like me. There are so many things that you can do from doing this because like I said, you learn everything about business from one door and then from there you can connect all of those dots. You can be whoever you want to be. Airbnb is a really good sandbox to learn to be yourself and to be a business owner and to be an entrepreneur and then springboard from there. And thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. You're my favorite people. If you want a video on how to start an Airbnb business, watch this video next. If you already own an Airbnb business and you want to make it better, watch this one next. Thank you guys. And as always, I will see you on the other side.